When everything's getting you down And your head is spinning round Just remember to surrender to love And you can feel divine Just remember to surrender to love And you can feel divine And you can feel divine Welcome to Feeling Divine, where it's safe to let go and connect with your heart. I'm Noni Freeman. We hope you'll love being here as much as we love having you. I like to come here to relax and tune into myself. It's not easy to stay in touch when I'm busy or dealing with life's ups and downs. Finding a quiet place where I can be alone and pay attention to what's going on inside really makes a difference. Feeling Divine is a program about real people who've stopped playing it small. People who are tapping into their passion and making a difference in the world. People like today's special guest, yeah. Pastor yeah. Mayor Honan, who practically single-handedly reaches out to the homeless on the streets uh, of Portland, Maine. And Feeling Divine is a place where you can surrender your troubles to divine love and receive the blessings that are waiting just for you. So sit back and relax as our talented troubadours, Wiley Beveridge and Jen Camo, sing a song for you that always goes straight to my heart. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here You are welcome here So open your heart and listen Thank you, Wiley and Jen. That was beautiful. Now, we'd like you to meet a remarkable woman whose way to feel divine is to walk the streets of Portland, Maine, reaching out to people who are homeless. Pastor Mayor Honan, co-founder of Grace Street Ministry, is a spunky servant of love. She goes where angels fear to tread, rain or shine, regardless of the season offering compassion, prayer, and whatever she can to help. 
We went on location this past winter to talk with Pastor Mayor. Take a look. I'm thrilled that you're going to have a chance to talk with our viewers about what it is that you do, what it is that you started up here with the homeless in Portland, Maine. You founded Grace Street Ministry, what, about six years ago now. Tell me about that. How did you ever get that idea? Um, myself and um, another UCC minister, Karen Christensen, um, felt drawn to uh, see if the, the homeless and marginalized in Portland uh, we're interested in having a pastor, basically. Um, nobody else was doing the street. The Salvation Army doesn't do that anymore. And so we thought we would try to see, um, I mean, we, we're, we're prejudiced, you know, we're ministers, so we think that that's a, a good thing, you know, to have uh, the spiritual realm remembered by people. You were thinking about ministering to people who live on the street, people who don't have homes to go to? Right, right. So we started uh, over, about six years ago, actually, and um, uh, we were kind of loosely modeled off of uh, a ministry to the homeless in Boston, um, Common Cathedral. And so we, we started walking around, basically talking to people and offering a little short prayer service on Sunday. We had a card saying um, what our number was, and we would say our business is prayer, and we also can be helpful sometimes practically. Um, give us a call and we'll let you know if we can help you. Had you made a habit of walking up to people you didn't know before to try to reach out to them like this? Or was this brand new for you? Uh, I had done a walk, a, a long walk, a prayer walk once. And actually, I didn't realize it was going to prepare me for this, but it really did because I met a lot of people that I'd never known before uh, on that walk. So it didn't feel quite as strange. Uh, my coworker, it felt very strange. She kept saying, she kept saying to me, um, "What if they're not homeless? What if they're not homeless?" And I thought, well, it doesn't really matter. We're just saying hello. Actually, it was hard, but it was very satisfying when we started seeing people trust us in a way um, that just was there because of our consistency. Now, did you wonder at all? Hey, okay, I'll see you later. Did you wonder what you were going to be able to bring them? If anything, yes. did you really question what you were doing? Yes. Sometimes? Well, we would both we both said let's try this out, and if it looks like it's ridiculous, I mean, you know, that these folks are so overwhelmed, so challenged that our presence is just, you know, it's just r ridiculous, you know, um, then we back out. And since we weren't making any money or anything on it, it was going to be pretty easy to back out on one level. So, uh, but that isn't what happened. What happened is I uh, I can really say now. Not necessarily do they need me on the street, but they need someone. And they need someone to remember the bigger picture and um, someone to um, hold hope in a certain way. And, and this, we have great social workers in these programs and in these shelters. They're like, they're, they're terrific. And, but um, there is something about a spiritual level of hope that whatever your belief is, that can make the day a little bit easier. I can't tell you how many times there's this grizzly person, you know, big beard or whatever, rough face, and we join heads, you know, and I and I just, you know, I'll just say something like, you know, may this symbol of truth um, help you remember no matter what the world has been like for you, no matter what it has in store for you, you are a precious child of God. And remember that. And frequently when I look up, there's tears coming down these old guys' faces, and I think you know how important it is to just remember you're blessed you know i'm just trying to remember that myself and maybe in the remembering they remember so even without everything even when you've lost everything you don't have a home you don't have a job you don't have a place to stay you right. don't have a clothes sometimes to wear or a change of clothes you right. don't have any place to get clean sometimes That's a right. place to eat even so, you're a child of God. Absolutely. And you really count. Absolutely. You count. Right. You're not a mistake. Now, what difference has this made for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. in your life? I know I know that you're making a positive difference in the lives of people that you're ministering to. Mm -hmm. I know that you're not solving the problems. I no. know that you can't possibly do that. And I suspect that you don't try to do that. No, not but, much. But there's got to be... Something that you've noticed, how, how is your life being impacted by your decision to walk the streets yeah. and minister to the homeless? Well, 
I mean, in honesty, I think it's shown me a little bit more about my own prejudice and my own lack of compassion. I mean, everybody's got their edge where the compassion ends, and then you kind of like fall fall off like Wile E. Coyote. You know, I told you that story about uh, the guy with the belt. I think I told you that. And anyway, that was, what's the story about the guy with the belt? Well, it was I was getting out of my car. It was pouring rain, and he he was coming down the the street towards the soup kitchen, and. Uh, on a walker, but he had one arm, wasn't working, and his pants were falling down. And um, uh, he called to me and said, you know, Pastor Mary, I, I need a belt. So I happened to go back to the car. I had a belt. You know, I have a lot of stuff in the car. And uh, I went over, and he had, like, two little pieces of twine holding up the front of the of the pants, and all the back had just kind of, like, slipped, you know, below the crack kind of thing. And... And so I grabbed the pants in the back and pulled them up, and he started yelling, she's a pastor, she's a pastor, you know. <laughs> it's okay. So, yeah, it's okay. So I said, you know what, Frank, you don't have to do that. And he kept yelling it all the way down. So we went down to the soup kitchen and went inside, and uh, it's chaotic, you know, a lot of things going on, staff are in there. And I basically handed him the belt, and uh, I and I realized how bad he smelt at the time. You know, he smelt really bad, and... All the pinkness of him was, he's a very big guy, he was hanging over, and, you know, I just realized this was pretty unpleasant, and so I hand him the, the, the belt, and I go, oh, somebody will help you with this, one of the staff members, and he stops, and it was this great moment, great moment, he stops, and he looks around the room, and then he looks right at me, and he goes, nobody wants to touch me, and it was like, boom, because, you know, if, if there's, if there is a presence, the presence was with me at that moment, saying, Look and see who you are. Look and see what you are. Look and see what your level of love is. It's right here. I try to be honest. I'm not the Messiah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just a person trying to, um, I don't know, see if I can help a few people. Now, you do some things that some of the agencies don't do. You help in ways that they don't. I know that you stop and pray if they'd like to pray. Yeah. Um, what are some of those other things that you'll help them with, those concrete kinds of things? Yeah, we're we're kind of lucky because if, if the people uh, can continue to donate a little bit to us, we have a little fund, uh, which we use on the street whenever we're out there. And so we can do things that don't require paperwork. You know, if somebody... You know, suppose they've had their ID stolen, okay? If, you're, if you don't have your ID, you can't get anywhere. You can't really do anything. So we can drive somebody to the motor vehicle and spend the $5 to get a state ID. And we can do it that afternoon or the next afternoon. We can get tents if people are leaving, you know, so that they can have a, some shelter on the way wherever they're hitching to. Um, I don't know any other agency that gets tents. Um, we can do things quickly, more quickly. Bus tickets, meal tickets. Yeah, we get bus tickets. Uh, uh, we get boots, we get sneakers, uh, change of clothes. Sometimes we can do that quickly. Um, all sorts of things. I'm getting two layettes now. Two young young women are pregnant, so uh, I said I'll get you a layette. <laughs> young woman, I don't know she's like 19. She goes, "Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What's a layette?" <laughs> It's great. Oh, but I just think, how are you going to take care of a baby out there? Mm -hmm. I just well, can't imagine. Well, she has an apartment now. She does. Yeah, she does. She has an apartment now, so it'll be a little easier. But she has no money. So, yeah, we help out with that. With pretty much, you know, our it's we try to have a one-to-one -one ministry. So if I meet somebody and I pick up, you know, if they got holes in their pants, it's pretty obvious. You could use and change your pants, right? So I'll just get their size and go get them a pair of pants, you know. Well, thank you so much, and, and let's carry on. Isn't she inspiring? Pastor Mayer knows that no matter what, each of us is somebody, and we're all family. But it's so common to believe that we don't matter if we don't have a home or a job or nice clothes. If we don't believe we measure up to others, it's easy to feel invisible and worthless. We all need to be remembered and to believe that we are good enough and loved just the way we are, because it's true. Now the amazing Michelle Curry will join Jen and Wiley to perform a song that makes me feel like dancing, this little light of mine. Enjoy. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, oh this little light of mine, I'm 
I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine Oh, I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine All around the world I'm gonna let it shine Oh, all around the world I'm gonna let it shine was amazing. There are lots of ways to feel divine, but no matter what, we have to take the time to feel divine. Being quiet and still gives us the chance to uncover and release our pain, to love and accept ourselves, and to listen to our divine wisdom. The man Jesus understood this he left behind everyone and everything he cherished to convince as many people as possible to give their hearts to God, to turn away from the ways of the world, and to embrace life in all its fullness. He trudged countless miles and slept on the hard ground under the stars, all for our sake. At first, small groups and then Thousands gathered to hear and be touched by him, to plead for something they wanted, for a miracle. And you know what? He never let them down. Even so, Jesus knew he had to take time to get away, to go off and to be alone. His heart bled for people who'd been abused and raged against mistreatment of any kind. And time and again, crowds broke his heart as they turned a deaf ear to his message. And just before he suffered and died, Jesus felt so sad that he felt like he was dying. He went off to a garden in Gethsemane, fell on his face and prayed, Father, if it's possible, don't let this happen to me. 
Father, you can do anything. Don't make me suffer by having me drink from this cup. But do what you want and not what I want. Jesus felt the same way we all do when overwhelmed and terrified. But he took the time to dive into his feelings, to connect with unconditional love, and to let it all go. Jesus loved each one of us more than life itself and believed that whatever happened would be for our greatest good. And divine love filled him with all the strength he needed but couldn't have if he hadn't taken the time to feel divine. All of our strength and joy comes from unconditional love, which created and lives in us. What incredible power. Watch this amazing video our team created that says it all. One power, one God, one power, one God, I Thanks for tuning in. We hope you loved being here as much as we loved having you. I'm Noni Freeman. See you next time on Feeling Divine.